The Taroko Gorge is a notable spot in Taiwan. I wanted to ride it. It's basically a highway that goes up through this national park area. It goes from sea level all the way up to 3,500 meters. It winds through amazing forests. It's apparently beautiful and treacherous. If you go up in the wrong weather, when the rain's coming, when the soil is soft, you could worry about landslides or rock falls or all sorts of manner of thing. I am not going to go on the trike today. I'm gonna to do a bus tour. I'm waiting for the bus to pick me up. I'm at the hostel right now. So we're gonna do this sort of a different way than, than I've done things in the past. We're gonna go straight tourist. It's one of the things I really wanted to take a look at. I wanna check it off the list however I can. This tourist way is the most economically feasible and I'll be back to the hostel uh, by five o'clock so I can pack up and get ready to go tomorrow and then uh, start winding down my time here in Taiwan. Should be fun. I get a front row seat because I got big American legs. So before the tour gets started, the thing we gotta do is bounce around every hotel and in Hualien and pick up people to fill up the bus. Right now we just have a few. This is my buddy. He's from Hong Kong. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Gordon. Yeah. We're gonna be nice. we're gonna be tour pals. <laughs> <laughs> tour buddies. I think we're gonna have about 25 people, he said. Our shoes are on. Yeah, I think so. But our driver looks fun. He looks like a fun guy. It'll be interesting to see him winding through the Taroko Gorge pathway. I'm gonna ride on this road tomorrow. This is sort of like a preview so that I can uh, figure out the good spots to fly. I'll fly my drone here for sure. The road is narrow though. Not a lot of shoulder. Oh, well, that says no bicycle. Our first stop on the gorge tour isn't actually on the gorge. It's, uh, it's a recreation area, like a, like a tourist spot, along the same road that I'll be taking when I when I do my ride. The Suhua Highway. It's funny, my Chinese is okay, but when he does his little talk in the bus, He's explaining all the facts, all the relevant things that I would probably enjoy knowing. But I have to find out through other means. It's too difficult to try to translate everything he says. Basically a lot of the biggest, the longest, the highest, <laughs> different things. So what did the guy in the bus say? The driver. All of that stuff he said in Chinese, I didn't understand it. There's something this? about the, uh, the people who are listening uh, here before. Oh. Uh, maybe when uh, the Japanese come into Taiwan, this is the Korea to them. Yuan Chu Ming. Yuan Chu Ming. See that road there, guys? I'll be riding on that road. Cutting into the mountain. Wow. Way out there, it really cuts in. Right there. Yeah, so this is a very interesting sneak peek into the type of riding I'm gonna have on this last leg of Taiwan. A little bit surprising. I wasn't expecting it to be 
this this sort of treacherous. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to be in a constant battle for for the road against uh, buses, trucks, anything on the highway. <laughs> yeah, it would have been interesting to cycle all the way up there, but I'm sure there'll be many other chances for me to get high, <laughs> so to speak. It's kind of neat being on a schedule that's not my own. You have until 10.30, then you gotta be back on the bus or going to the next spot. It kind of makes me a little bit more uh, aware of the time I have so that I use it maybe a little bit more wisely than this uh, open-ended trip. We are gonna be back on the bus, head to uh, checkpoint number two, actually entering the uh, Taroko Gorge area. The parking lot is the tunnel. The tunnel is the parking lot. Twelve o'clock. This is the Sha Ka Dan Trail. I kind of like trails when they're carved into the mountains like this. There's so many signs here to say, watch your head. They had to have come here for a very big reason. So many people probably bumped their head on these rocks that they were like, we're gonna put a lot of signs up. A lot of signs, an obnoxious amount of signs to make sure that people don't bump their heads or at least we don't have a liability for people when they do bump their heads. Well, I don't have time to continue up this trail. I think after this point, it actually gets pretty interesting. This is sort of like the touristy trail up till now and then up above it gets more natural, but we're on a clock. I was sort of sneak listening to a tour guide that was speaking English as we were walking along the trail. And he said that these plants here, the ones with the large leaves on them, are actually a uh, indigenous people's uh, crop and they're growing vegetables here and then if you pick the vegetable and you eat it it could get you in a lot of trouble apparently they uh, fought really hard to get the rights to their land back and they own this section of the uh, Taroko Gorge trail uh, area you can even see here on the ground you can see grass clippings and stuff. I bet they'd have to take care of this area like it's their own and they cultivate it. What an interesting life that would be, eh? Kind of living alongside this uh, this trail. Look at that cloud. That is a weird looking cloud. So strange. Welcome to Taroko National Park. Please don't stay. That's a great tagline for the for the park. Come to beautiful Taroko, but don't stay. Get the hell out. You could probably spend entire days going up that trail or down that trail or exploring this whole area. 
we're on a schedule, so we've got to keep that train moving. But this would have been a really interesting ride, actually. You'd have had to share the road with other uh, other trucks and whatnot, but I think they'd be pretty copacetic to your situation. And I think, to be honest, tomorrow's ride is going to be uh, more than enough as far as interesting, treacherous roads go. Next up, uh, lunch. We're going to get uh, beef noodle, which is like a very common Taiwanese beef noodle dish. But it's funny, the bus driver on my way here, he asked, He's like, he asked me something in Chinese, I didn't not understand the translation, and he, and, he said, and everybody's like, why are you asking him that? What is he asking me? He's like, he's asking you about your religion. What is your religion? Because they might serve pork there. You don't just come out and ask somebody their religion in the middle of a crowded bus. New road, yeah. This bus driver seems like a funny guy. I don't understand any of his jokes, but a lot of people are laughing. <laughs> told us we had to wear these hard hats. Although if one of these boulders comes off, there isn't much to, uh, isn't much gonna save you. This little plastic hat ain't gonna do it. They say that looks like an Indian's face. Do you see it? In a place like this, it's just really hard to give you perspective. Because <laughs> this hard hat is so goofy. Stylish? Am I still start my own style? It's really hard to give you perspective. I still look goofy. These caverns are so massive. But when I fly the drone or whatever, I don't know. I'll have to edit it later to see if uh, if you can really see how uh, sort of awe-inspiring this all is. You guys see that? If you look up and you look at the shape of the sky here, from here to here, it's the shape of uh, Taiwan, he says. So like right here is Taipei right here. And then I, I cycled down that side first. And then down at the bottom, that, that's the bottom of Taiwan. You see it? You see it?
cool thing about the drone is that I can explore things that I wouldn't necessarily have the time to explore otherwise. I can walk to that, that place with the waterfall fairly easily, but, but that place up there, I don't think so. And the other place that's actually around the hill, I didn't even see the huge temple over the hill. You end up finding things. It's an interesting thing going off on a tour and then stopping at specific places. It would have been nice to really understand what he was talking about because, man, our tour guide was pretty excited about explaining different things. I got bits and pieces, but just bits and pieces. How can? Bus tours ending with a trip to the beach. Nobody seems to be swimming. Everybody's just looking. <laughs> Well, tomorrow morning I leave Hualien and I head north. I'll be going on that uh, cliffside road there for a little while. It looks very tunnely, which it puts me at, at odds with traffic, but it sure cuts those peaks out. So maybe I could kind of get through it fairly quickly. We'll see, right? I think that uh, if I push it, I can leave really early tomorrow morning. I could be in Taipei in two days, barring any uh, mechanical errors, any problems with the trike or anything else. I think uh, I should be there in two days. Oh, I didn't tell you guys, I went to a bike shop and uh, they gave me a couple of packets of uh, like rash burn protectant. So uh, I'll give that a try tomorrow because I think we'll have two very, very long riding days. I think I would have much rather been on uh, that Taroko Highway alone, like riding. I think that would have been a really interesting ride. Because we didn't even barely get into it. We just kind of like went to the entrance area, rode around, and then came back out. And there's a whole bunch of stuff as you get higher, higher, higher. And I don't even think we broke a couple of hundred meters high. And that thing goes 3,500 meters high. So there was definitely a lot to, to explore. It was kind of a good way to, to experience a little bit of Taroko, even if it was a short time. I have a feeling that tomorrow could be the most harrowing ride I've ever had. Getting an idea of those uh, tunnels and that road on that cliff that I'll be riding on gives me a uh, real interesting insight into what I'll be riding on tomorrow. I'm excited for it. Hopeful and excited. Fingers crossed. Look what I found on the beach. <laughs> That's not cool at all. <laughs> Next time on the Jayo Vlog. I don't know why, but I'm very nervous about today's ride. I'm gonna be riding along the cliffside. Well, I found a reason to wear the helmet. So, yeah, I'm still alive, so people are still being pretty respectful. And like that, we are at the uh, top, at the tunnel.